Please be advised that the following film has not yet been rated. I'm Pete, short for polyethylene terephthalate, and I'm here with you today to share my life story. A lot of us go through life without recognizing the effect that we have on the environment, and I'm hoping that by sharing my story with you, you might reflect upon your own environmental impact. Here with me today are some of my friends, Frank Vaughton, Plastica Verde, Phyllis Up, and Polly T. They are going to fill you in on my birth, how I was how I was molded into the bottle that I am today, how all this water got inside of me, and what will happen to me after I've been used by consumers like you. So, sit back and relax and enjoy the journey. I was born hundreds of thousands of years ago, an average weight of 30 ounces of crude oil. A couple of months ago, my family and I got an, on an oil tanker and moved to Point Comfort, Texas. Frank Vatten is a close family friend. He knew me during my early years in Texas. Pete was a rambunctious young piece of plastic made up of ethylene, propylene, and hi other hydrocarbons. Eventually we went through the cracking process where he was heated and turned into a polymer, and by combining polymers he finally grew into a nice plastic resin. Just like other 20 ounce PET bottles, Pete took a lot of energy to make. That bottle required 1,244 BTUs to produce. One BTU, British Thermal Unit, is equivalent to the heat that is required to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. Also, bottles produce solid waste. Pete generated 3.5 grams of solid waste during production. 17 million barrels of oil are used to produce bottled water for Americans each year. That's the equivalent of the fuel needed to run one million U.S. cars for a year. Next, we're going over the molding process of how I was actually made into a bottle. We're going to talk to Plastico Verde, an old friend and expert in the art of plastic molding. Was he injected, you ask? Yes, he was injected. Injected, then molded into what he is today. Otherwise known as the IBM process or injection blow molding. The first step of the process consists of plastic resin being melted and concealed in a hollow rod like a test tube called a parison. It is then formed into a bottleneck piece called a preform. About 1,001 pounds of PET resin per 1,000 bottles is used. Once inserted into a molding cast, the molten resin starts to cool and air fills the preform forcing the plastic to expand and fill the mold. The bubble of heated plastic starts to take shape while about 7 to 350 PSI is used in the process at first. But once the rod is completely injected, about 580 PSI is used to fill the cast. The plastic then chills enough to become solid in a refrigerator-like cast. The mold is then ejected out of its cast. 5,619 BTUs of energy is used in the entirety of the process and about one pound of solid waste is emitted per 1,000 bottles. One of the most exciting days in Water Bottle's life is the day he meets the water that will accompany him for the next part of his life journey. To help me explain the process, I have with me my friend Phyllis Up. Phyllis Up is going to explain the process and materials involved in the filling of a water bottle as he continues to grow and move forward in life. The filling of a bottle is a pretty exciting day. First off, I would like to dispel some common misconceptions. Many bottles believe that their water comes from fresh springs, mountain snow, or freshwater sources. Instead, the water that will be joining you typically comes from municipal reservoirs. But don't worry, the water is perfectly safe. As a matter of fact, that is another misconception. The water that comes from municipal reservoirs is just as safe, if not safer and healthier, than water that comes from other sources. The water that will be joining you undergoes regulations in order to make it safe for personal cohabitation and consumption. The fresh groundwater is purified through several processes involving reverse osmosis, ozone treatment, and UV light. Then it is treated with chemicals for coagulation, filtered through sand or membranes, and disinfected with some form of chlorine. Unfortunately, these processes are not very effective or safe for the environment. 
the amount of water wasted is enormous. For every million gallons that are pumped, 15% is lost due to leaks and breaks in the water lines. Water loss is not the only problem associated with the process. The amount of energy used in the bottling process is staggering. For treatment and delivery of that same million gallons of water, 15 million BTUs are required. A third concern is the leaching of chemicals from water bottles like yourself into the water contained within. This leaching occurs when the bottles are exposed to cold or high temperatures. Finally, we have reached the last stage in a plastic bottle's life. This is my friend Polly. She's here to tell you about what will happen to me once all of my precious contents have been consumed. From what I've heard, I can be either recycled or landfilled. Hopefully Polly can help us understand the waste associated with each of these outcomes. Neither option sounds pleasing to me, but let's hear what she has to say. I'll start off by talking about the recycling process. Recycling is all about saving energy and cutting down on environmental pollution. First and foremost, recycling just one pound of PET saves approximately 12,000 BTUs of energy. Recycling also reduces the amount of waste that is landfilled, which cuts down on pollution. In 2000, recycling prevented the release of 32.9 million metric tons of carbon equivalent into the atmosphere. In comparison to creating new plastic bottles from virgin materials, recycling bottles results in much less water pollution as well. However, the recycling process isn't waste-free. Recycling requires extensive transportation from the homes of consumers to plants where it is sorted, then again to plants where plastic recyclables are washed and shredded into small chips. The PET chips are shipped again to companies that use them to create new products. Now that I've covered a bit about recycling, let's move on to landfilling. Landfilling is more harmful to the environment than recycling, especially when it comes to PET bottles. PET is designed to be durable and to retain its shape. Because of this, PET plastic is not biodegradable. PET bottles sit in landfills indefinitely, taking up space and polluting the environment. Potentially toxic additives of PET bottles can seep into the groundwater, polluting the water supply. I know this wasn't what you wanted to hear, Pete, but you must look on the bright side. You can either help reduce fossil fuel consumption by being recycled, or you can spend the next few hundred years in a landfill with most of your friends.